Okay, so Roxanne is going to be running the class for just a minute. Um, please continue to keep chiming in if you have questions or comments or like, hey, what about this or whatever. But basically, um, so I'll just say this real quick. Roxanne, the last, ah, just choked on a, my cough drop, right? Uh -huh. Roxanne, the last training session we were here in Denver, she came up and just out of the blue, she's like, hey, I'll show you a little bit. She ran for easy an hour and a half or more and just was like, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. And everybody loved it. And we're like, Roxanne, we want you back. <laughs> okay? She's been she's been really well trained. Guess what she was just doing just now? Just to, she wasn't here the last two days. So she's coming into this cold turkey. She didn't see any of the buildup, any of the anything, okay? Guess what she, I just saw her doing right this second. She's browsing pieces of the puzzle. What do they have under their items? What do they have under here? What do they have under the banks? So she's bouncing to different pages just to even get a feel for it, okay? So that's very important. You don't want to just like, boom, here's exactly what we do. You kind of want to fill out the situation. What, what's that? So that's a great kudos to you. Even just, I was lightly just watching you out of the corner of my eye, and she was browsing. She's like, okay, looks like we just have it called default bank, and there's nothing else set up, and it might be this level. Like She's figuring out where she's at, and then she's going to determine where she's going to go. Roxanne, it's all you, young lady. Okay, so um, I don't know what you've touched on. I'm thinking if we're getting to the expense side or the, the bookkeeping accounting side that, you know, we've kind of been playing with everything at the beginning and nothing at the end. So um, I don't know if you walked through setting up a bank or if it was just a general bank in there. So I'm just going to go. I work out of the classic homepage just because of the fact that um, that's what I'm used to. <laughs> I'm not really into the grid and in, in, in that part of it. But if I set up a client and that's kind of what they're used to because maybe they had a touch screen or maybe they do have a touch screen now or whatever, I'll use whatever interface they want me to use, which if you've already been told or not, you can just go to Chooser, which is the link up top there under the classic homepage next to your logo, to the right of your logo, and you can hit Chooser and select whatever interface you want to use. Um, there's a couple that are specific to industries and such. Um, so. And then, of course, you have the links that are always up top um, next to your logo that are home, chooser, logout, print, help, back, and switch corporations, um, which is also very helpful. They're usually at the bottom as well. Um, that way you can, you know, I'm constantly on the phone with clients, and they're like, okay, wait a minute, like, what happened, or where did you go, or, you know, I'm like, just go home. So then I'm like, double click on your logo. Go home. Yeah. Or just click on the home. There's there's so many ways to skin a cat or whatever you want to say in Atlas. That's another plus because some people just don't get a certain way. And if you show them another way, they're like, oh, okay, for whatever reason. doesn't even matter. Whatever clicks, you know. So I, I kind of jump around. I use different approaches of things just so that you can see it's out there because maybe you won't remember to double click on your logo to go home. Maybe you'll only remember to click the link. Maybe you'll never recognize these links for a while, you know, whatever. So anyhow, I'm going to go to system maintenance. Um, just, as some a small, people, just as a small comment, depending on your interface, if it's touchscreen or whatever, may depend on if you're double clicking or single clicking. Most computers and mouses are single, okay? But sometimes touchscreen, like, it doesn't really know you're there until you're, like, it depends on the interface, okay? In general, think single click, and then if you need to, and it doesn't work, Click it again, okay? But like, just try it one at first. Um, a lot of people, when you first start setting them up as clients, they're afraid to use the classic homepage because it looks pretty overwhelming. And usually when you're setting somebody up, it's usually going to be a management or higher level. And so you're wanting to assign them a lot of permissions. Based off of the permissions that you assign, these little drop downs and tabs are going to have more options. Even the little system basics and the links in the middle are going to be smaller or bigger. So it looks to me like there's probably every permission in here because all these options and, and drop downs are here. And that's intimidating. But what I always just let clients know is that, you know, the system assets, that's always anything that you're bringing in, any money you're bringing in. So that could be a quote because you're thinking about selling something and bringing money in. That could be an invoice because you're actually going to sell something to bring the money in. You know, you could be building a recipe to create a product to put something out that you're going to bring money in. Everything coming in, a deposit. Everything, your receivables, collecting your money, statements. And then you have your liabilities underneath, which are just money that's going out for whatever reason. It doesn't matter if it's a PO. It doesn't matter if it's a straight expense. Um, 
you know, sometimes people look at accounting terms and processes a little different than what they're used to looking at in Atlas for whatever reason. I've, I've realized that with setups. What I always like to explain to people is that, you know, when you're dealing with the purchase order, because sometimes you'll train somebody and they'll think, okay, well, I have a bill to Excel or whoever your electricity company is. Okay, I need to pay that, you know, um, I'm going to create a PO because they're so used to setting up their inventory and getting all that together. I'm like, no, it's an expense. You know, you have to kind of play with the terms. Anything that has to do with inventory, which is anything you buy from someone that you're going to sell, is, is going to generate a purchase order. Anything that you're going to pay money for, which, which a purchase order results in a payment, obviously, but it's inventory, so it's a purchase order. Anything that you're going to pay out that doesn't involve inventory, whether it be a bill, whether it be advertising materials, whether it be, you know, whatever it is, a bank fee on your bank statement, anything like that is a straight expense because you're just paying money out. It has nothing to do with inventory. Believe it or not, that's a little confusing for people when they start using the system because they're not thinking about those little things. They're thinking about everything. So I just like to kind of reiterate. Um, for the liabilities, you also have your payables because you always want to know who you owe. So when you click on your payables, which is a part of accounting, you're going to see all your vendors because um, anything you have within your system as far as inventory is driven by a vendor, whether it be you yourself as a company because you make something or whether it be ABC Cola, Acme Seeds, whoever. So I'm going to just do the back button. Um, and then you have your manager's time clock, and then you have your admin time clock. The manager's time clock you may give permissions for to your manager because they're going to go ahead and look at the time, make a couple adjustments for the time for your employees if they're using the system to clock in and out, but they're not going to actually be able to roll it over to payroll and pay them. The admin time clock, that's going to allow you to make any changes, and then it's going to allow you to connect and do the payroll piece. And then, of course, you have your payroll homepage, which you can set up and utilize, or you can just leave it there. That's one of the things I love about Atlas is that you are given the platform to use it however you like, um, with the exception being the web interface, things like that, the web. Um, but you can use all of it or none of it. You know, you can get it for just the sales side and do all your back-end accounting in another system. That's entirely up to you. Or you can use the system for what it's worth and keep it all together and, you know, not have to do two systems and double work. So, because eventually you're going to have to record numbers from your other system into here and vice versa. So, anyhow, I just looked at system maintenance, which is the second tab from the right, from the top. And this has to do with basically like all, all of the data in your, in your, well, all of the kind of like, things to create your data. How would you explain the maintenance versus the... This is, this is almost board. like creating your buckets in a way. Right. Or, or some sort of, like, players. Some, some of your little management things that like, oh, you know what, I need to fix this or I need to add this so that I can use it later on. It's almost setting up your buckets or tables type stuff. Like a lot of port status or something. Yeah. Or, or, so, or bulk managing prices and find and replace type stuff. It's, it's, a, it's a maintenance type. Really. So I'm coming here because... Um, you know, first of all, you have the customer homepage, which you guys have probably worked in to build your customers. Customers can be anybody from patients that are coming into your doctor's office or your clinic or whatever you got going on to, um, you know, somebody coming in your restaurant to whatever the case may be. You have vendors and payees. Payees are going to be your employees, anybody that you're setting up for your payroll or just setting up as an employee because the employee, you're allowed to add more information and pay rates and, you know, you can go a lot further with it. Um, vendors or anybody that you're actually going to be paying money to at some point. Um, the next ones are, I won't go into the expense types just yet, I'm just going to go to the bank homepage and hit go. I see that you guys have a default bank in here, we're just going to assume that it's like a checking account of some sort and we're just going to leave it in there. This would be where you would create a bank account and because you don't have a cash drawer in here and I'm just so used to having both because Ultimately, whether you have a bank or not, there's going to be times when people will spend cash, whether it be, you know, the owner and they stop and pick something up with their own money and then they bring a receipt back to get reimbursed. Or, you know, maybe you had cash sales that you had come in the door and then, you know what, a vendor came in and so you allowed your manager to pay $100 to that vendor because they were there right there and you're like, go ahead and take it out of the deposit, pay them, and we'll account for it later type thing. So you always have some type of, of cash drawer that you need to work with, in my opinion. So I'm going to add a new bank, and I'm just going to put that, just cash drawer. 
I think, because I'm assuming you guys have cash payments in here. Great, great, yeah. Anything with an asterisk in any of these fields with an atlas are going to be necessary fields um, for the sake of just getting things done and being fast or whatever it is you need to do. You know, you can create all these things on the fly whenever you need to um, without any of the info, but you do have to put something. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a bunch of zeros in the account and routing number because this is just a cash drawer, which would be what we would do anyway. Um, I'm just going to put whatever in here. And those are pretty much about the same fields. Now the starting balance date, um, depending on how far you're going to go back to catch up your books or get your, your accounting straight, um, that date will affect your books. So if you had a client or you had a job or you yourself had your business and you know ultimately you're going to go back to the beginning of the year, then I would probably change that to January 1st. If you are starting right now, you're going to plug in numbers from before, but you're not really going to worry about other months, you could leave that. I just want you to be conscious of the fact that you need a starting date because in your reporting and in your accounting, it will affect what you can do. So I'll just leave it, or actually I don't know how much you started, I'll just put 9-1. That's great. Was it 10 Mostly, days ago? Most of the information, it was almost a blank corporation. Well, that's started, okay. So you're, you're totally good that way. Okay. Um, this Again, this is another field for an asterisk. If you had a check, uh, starting check number, you could really put that in there. Um, some people don't even use the, the uh, what are they called, checks? What are they called? Pre-printed checks. Pre checks. You can actually purchase the pre-printed checks to use them within Atlas. There's no separate equipment or software things. You know, of course, you can just hook it up like you normally would, feed the checks in your printer, and you can actually check this box for the check type to say that you're going to be using, you know, the checks on the top or whatnot. Um, most people don't use those at, in the beginning, so you always just select handwritten because they will be having checks and so on coming through. Being this is the cash drawer, I mean, I'll just do handwritten to have something there. Do you have to check that for a cash drawer? Does you have to have some sort of check right? type. Okay. And, and so I'll just select usually that. what ends up happening is like, um, she's saying that most people start at a handwritten level. It depends on the business. If the business is already established, they may already have checks from QuickBooks or they checks from other or that they already bought, no problem. We play along. We actually mm -hmm. allow you to go back and set that up later if you need to. You can move the fields around so that whatever check you have, we'll play with it and kind of match up to your fields. Kind of, maybe she could just, as you move along, you can one up or, um, yeah, or I, I'm not, you have a printer, but I, I mean, you I've just got, show I've you how you got, got, I've got blank checks right up here. Okay. I, I figured we were going to be playing. I wasn't sure, but it doesn't have to be necessarily on this cash bank. Our other one, I, right. I saw a button on the other bank, on the default bank, that said set up, uh, set up checks. Basically, it takes you to a little flash widget that says yeah. it allows you to move the fields cool. around. I like, I like okay, so I'm just going to add it because it's already active. This is also the part where you would go within the bank itself. Let me go ahead and add the bank. I just want to show you once you add it, now you have two banks here, the cash drawer and the default. Later on down the road, say you close this bank account, maybe it was Wells Fargo. You would go ahead and just go again, if you go home, go back to your maintenance and your bank home page to check out your banks. You would actually click on the bank itself. You could go to the bottom and you could actually deactivate the account because maybe you don't want checks written out, you don't want no mistakes. It wouldn't erase or hurt any of the data that you had prior to the date that you made it inactive, but it would definitely stop you from using that account in the future. So you could definitely do that as well. This one right here has checks on the top, so we could use that and play with that in a moment. Um, I just wanted to create that account just in case we run into invoices that are cash. So I went home again. Um, what I'm going to do right now is go to your inventory page, which is in your reporting. The reports are going to give you all of your inventory, any of your bank statements, income statements, running balances, balance sheet and such. Um, I'm going to hit go because I just wanted to see, I was trying to look before we started at what inventory you guys have in here. Again, it is vendor specific. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create one more item just so we can play with it. I see that we have Brady's Garden Center and we have some squash and tomatoes. Um, we also have Greenway products and I don't see any like actual food or anything, but I'm going to add them because I want to be able to differentiate and show how you can actually look for one same item and it could be from two different vendors and that way you're not so scared of using somebody else's tomato or some you know, it's very, very specific. So what I'm going to do is just, I'm just going to... Just by the way, to, 
this is this is a small comment. Somebody's been playing in the photos. Like that's awesome. As of, oh, right. As of exactly. yesterday, there wasn't that many photos at all, but that's looking great. Somebody's in there <laughs> adding photos, so that's great. That's awesome. I'm going to go to your PO homepage because I don't know how you created all these. You must have had a PO to put into the system so that you had your items here in your inventory. Um, so I'm going to say in Greenway number two, I'm going to hit edit. This might be a little refresher. I don't know if you guys are comfortable with adding items right now, but I'm going to add a tomato and hit search. You can either do a quick add to add an item into the purchase order up top, or you can do it down below. It's not going to find it because why? Because a tomato was in there, but it was under Brady. It wasn't under Greenway or whatnot. So I'm going to add the item. I'm going to say we have like 50. And no, a tomato was spelled differently too. I saw that. There was an E on the end of it. And I could put an E. <laughs> I just think it looks like toe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're great. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> so I want to put it down as, what was it, basic inventory, I'm assuming. This is the description field, which you guys probably already know, to where you can be very creative and put whatever you like. Just remember that anything you put in the description field is going to show up on your receipts for your customers and reporting and such. Most importantly, like your receipts for your customers. So sometimes if you don't really want to put anything, you know, people are just like, I don't care, you know, whatever tomato. Well, you just put the same thing. You do have to put something because it is an asterisk field. Um, for the most part, the majority of your inventory is going to be the in and out quantities. Um, and then you can go ahead and put your cost in. I don't know if you're associating costs. Were you associating costs? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll just put like a dollar. No, we'll put like These are actually seeds, aren't they? Quarter. Um, I'm not sure which one it was. We have to kind of go okay. I was there. I can double check. I, I thought it was actual product versus versus a seed. It was a seed. Okay. Okay, then I'm gonna put a seed. So um, the, again, the unit of measurement, which brings me back to my train of thought before about some of the things I love about the system, is that you can actually incorporate units of measurement into your accounting which is totally awesome because I don't care what accounting system it is, you can't do that. So you're literally doing math on the side so that you can figure money on your system. That is like huge in my world. <laughs> and so, you know, I obviously haven't had to use like meters, centimeters and all this stuff, but even for my personal business, I can use hours, I can use minutes, you know, for consulting. Um, you know, some of my clients, I can use grams. Um, you know, whatever it is I need to use, I can use each because it's at each item. Um, I mean, it's it's awesome that you can even utilize that. So I'm going to leave it as each, and that is an asterisk field. We're going to say that we sell it for the seeds. What are we selling them for? What do you want me to put here? I thought it was a random markup at a percentage. Currently, the, the use markup says we're going to calculate it on the fly, so it looks like it's going to be for 55 cents right now. Is that a 55 or 65? I can't tell. 65? Um, 65. Okay. So should I put a lower, should no, I no, no. just you're, don't worry about the cost? You're fine, you're totally fine. We'll just let it calculate it on the fly, that's fine. Okay. So Either just, way, basically there's a switch there. You can switch, flip flop. Okay, so do I need to put a price in there? No, you're, you're good. Okay, totally you'll just safe. calculate it. And then this is where you can select the default category where the asterisk is, of whether you're going to tax this item or not. You know, um, for me, myself, I'm a consultant, so I deal with my time. I don't deal with like anything. I don't sell inventory to anybody. I don't sell items. Um, so I always select labor. So when I create my purchase order and to put my time in that I can put for my different clients, it's always labor to me because, you know, it's not a taxable item. Um, so this is going to be taxable. If you had a barcode set up or if you wanted to establish a barcode, you would just click here. Um, it has a, a system that will automatically assign a barcode for you or you can put a number or whatever you're, you're wanting it to be, letters, whatever, in here so that it could do the same. Um, and then you could actually have your barcode machine that will print them out and you can label all your product, whatever you want to do. Um, it also goes into RFID tagging. If you're working with gardens and plants and such, you could go that deep too or you don't have to. None of these have asterisks, so if you leave them blank, you're fine. Um, I'm just going to add that item in here and then I'm going to right click on my logo because that will allow me to open up another tab, which you've also probably seen. 
I don't want to lose where I'm at, so I'm just doing that for the simple fact of going back and forth. I wanted to see if that tomato was, you probably know more than I do, but because you guys set this stuff up, but I'm going to go into all and I'm going to find that other tomato for Brady's. And I'm going to go to edit. It looks like it's it was a plant. It was under so plant. it's a plant. Okay, so it's a plant. Alrighty. So now I'm going to go back to my other tab. And then I'm going to go to my tomato. And I'm clicking on the name of it because I want to be able to go into the item. You've got to be very careful with changing anything about an inventory item within a purchase order because when you click on the item and change it within that purchase order, it's only going to change it within that purchase order. It's not going to change it within any other things that you did. Um, most of the changes that you make to inventory, you're going to want to go to your inventory homepage and make the changes to the item there. Um, but just keep it's in mind... Kind of, it's kind of a master item, okay? So the PO, we're going to use it over and over and over and over and over again, okay? And it has to pull it from a master item. We want to go to the master item. So the reason why I said that is because, okay, maybe you had a couple invoices prior to me coming here today. Maybe you sold some things yesterday and you sold the tomato. And now I'm going into the, into the tomato and I'm changing something. Well, you want to always make sure that within those invoices, the tomato that I changed reflected in them. Normally that happens, I've noticed. Is that a change that's happened recently? Um, It'll update everywhere? So, so or, if, if somebody's actually physically changing an item number, it used to be like this. We let you change the number. We're like, okay, hey, just so you know, um, these other ones haven't been updated. Like, we kind of prompted you for an update. If somebody had, you have to have pretty high admin permissions to be able to change a part number, which is virtually like an item. But if you do change it, what we do is like, okay, tell you what, we're going to help you out. We'll okay. cascade it through the system. I've already. noticed that. <laughs> so if, if she forgot the E on here and it was already on four other POs and 15 other invoices, she's like, oh, God, God, I really meant to put the E on the end of that. And she hits update. Because she has the power to be in here to update that, what we'll do is we'll throw that through the rest of the system. Throw that other E on there so that it's actually, it doesn't break the links. It's basically what happens. Okay, so I basically just added that. If you go back to your inventory homepage, I just want to show you. Um, I added in the tomato, and I did put it as a plant because I want there to be the Brady's Garden Center tomato, and I also want there to be the Greenway Products tomato. That's all I was doing there. Um, we're going to look at your invoice homepage. I just want to check it out. I didn't get a chance to check that out. You guys have quite a few invoices here. Um, just so you know, when you have the flags right here in the middle of your screen, sometimes you have unhappy faces, I think, even, in accounting. Or right. So just scroll down to the bottom of the page, it's actually a legend. The flag says, I still have something that's partially on account, either some sort of a partial payment or something. It's what is, is still outstanding, okay? And if you do have an unhappy um, face, then you technically have a disconnect, okay? Okay. So, um... This one is because it's on account. Nobody ever paid for that. Anyhow, um, I'm going to go ahead and create an invoice for the sake of creating one with different items. So you can either go to um, the start a new card or quick card, you know, however you access your, your invoices. Um, some people have buttons set up. They can create favorites um, that, you know, Instead of popping up and looking at all your inventory items, you can actually have a button that says food, you can have a button that says seeds, you can have a button that says plants, you know, because maybe you have like a thousand vendors, you know, and you buy stuff from all kinds of people. Well, you can actually click on a button, which we could even create a couple if you wanted, um, to where you could say, okay, I want, I want to look at all your plants, see where we have plants from. Click on the plants button, and then you'll be able to say, okay, well, I have ten different plants from people. Which plants am I looking for here? Um, I guess I can go ahead and do start a new cart. I'm going to select my type, which is just going to be a customer invoice. And I always tell people, anybody that shopped online can definitely do sales and analysts. <laughs> it doesn't take much <laughs> training. It's more of the building the products and inventory in the system. Um, you can go ahead and choose your customer. Um, when you have the initial setup for an invoice, you always have to say, OK, well, who is the customer? Um, where was the location that this sale was done? Okay, headquarters. What about a warehouse, you know, and, and maybe I was transferring product from my warehouse to my store. Okay, well, it could say warehouse here. 
you know, whatever the situation may be. Maybe you have four locations. I mean, whatever it is, it'll, it'll uh, specify where the sale is, is taking place. You can also select a salesperson and another salesperson. You can leave the drop down to where you don't have another salesperson if you like, or you can have somebody specific here as well. The date. Um, sometimes you have to be really careful if you're adding old invoices into the system. Maybe, you know, you're doing some backlog or, you know, catch up or something, and maybe you're switching over systems. Just be real mindful that whatever date is here is the date that the system thinks the sale took place. So if you're doing something old, it's going to be changed right there in that date field. This right here is a drop down because even within an invoice later on, you can change. Okay, you know what? It actually wasn't a customer invoice. It was actually a transfer because, you know, I just transferred product from my warehouse to my store. So you can even change that after the fact. That's another thing I love about the system is that, you know, you're not stuck. You can create something and you can change anything, almost anything about it later. Um, I'm going to choose the customer and I'm going to say, I saw Brandon. <laughs> and I'm going to assign him to my cart. And Brandon is going to buy some stuff. He's going to buy tomatoes. Okay, so for your salespeople in there, you know, a lot of people are real nervous because they're like, well, I buy these tomatoes from like 10 different people. How are my people going to know where to get it or what to do or blah, blah, blah. So I didn't realize that there was actually two vendors. Now there's three, which is fine because I'm going to buy like... So those are seeds. I'm looking 50 at the category. Seeds. Oh, those are seeds. These are plants. Okay. Yep. Well, then you know what? I, I don't want to be buying the plants from everybody forever because it's just, you know, I want to start doing my own thing. So I'm going to buy like actually 100, 100 seeds, and I'm going to add those to my cart from Acne, and I'm going to add for the time being, because again, you know, I don't, and that's another thing, you can put in any letters, you can put the letter T, it's going to pull up anything with a T, and that's anywhere in the item, it doesn't matter if it's in the, the category, in the description, in the vendor, and it doesn't even matter which is actually awesome because you don't have to be specific and if there was a typo or something when you entered an item, you don't have to worry about, okay, this is how they did it and they spelled it this way. So I'm going to put in my tomato and I'm actually going to get some plants and I'm going to get So you, you can do multiple ones if you want. All you have to do is just put numbers and numbers and the system will loop over the thing and say, which one had a valid number? Add it, add it, add it. Like, if you want it to, you can potentially just pop through it. Okay, so I got two. Um, from the two inch lemon boy ones and I got five plants of just the tomato one from the Greenway products. And I'm going to go ahead and leave them taxable. If you wanted to make them non-taxable for whatever reason, maybe, you know, some items were not taxable, you could actually change it within your invoice itself and put, um, oh, actually, you know what, you can put with tax included if you like to. Sometimes people want to include their tax in their product and they want to say, okay, you're going to buy these plants, but it's going to be $30 with tax. You know, you won't have to actually sit there and figure it out and then plug that number in or do the math in your head. You can actually do it right there. Update your cart. You always want to update your cart for that specific line item. So, so what it does, not, with tax included, it's a one-time deal. Oh, it calculates it already did. and it flips it to taxable. But basically, can you see how your extended value is actually lowering? It was 150 mm -hmm. She's done it back. Backed out, backed out, backed out. Right. If you did it again, watch this. Like, uh, go ahead and hit with tax included. I want to show you that it's actually doing some math, okay? You're technically just wiping yourself down, 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 down. Go ahead and say update card again. Watch this. So the extended was 130. Scroll down. Okay, so it's actually backing out the tax and saying, okay, cool. I'm now normal taxable, but I've already figured it into whatever the total was. And so be careful there. Just, just as a caution. See, it won't go, it won't go back to the 150, even to go back to the taxable. So these are the items I'm going to buy. I'm just going to check out. I want to create a deposit. I'm going to say they paid 150, and I'm going to say they paid cash. I'm going to create my invoice, and I'm going to just double click on my logo again. I'm just going to go home.